Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Movies Are Real for the month of January 2020. Finally, it is the year 2020. It feels like I've lived here for a month, but I would be wrong. This is the first day of January in the year 2020, the new decade. Right now, I am your host, George. Uh, I'm here with Ryan Lance. How excited are you about 2020? That's me, although I have no idea where that was going. Neither did I. (laughs) I appreciate all of it, but... That's Very fair. Confused. Tough but fair. If it's the first day of January, Harold, we've seen yeah, we five seen we, movies. We've seen five you movies. You know then. what, man? That's how much of an insider we are. We've oh, got that true. 2020 picture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate my life, Carrie. How are you doing? That's this kind of intro I expect. That took me like two seconds, and once I got it, I was very upset. <laughs> That's the kind of humor I bring to the table. You're welcome, ladies and um, gentlemen. Yeah, this is the movie podcast where we discuss the movies of the month prior and what we're looking forward to the next month. This is the first episode of 2020. Uh, thank you so much for listening to our best of discussions, which is weird because we just finished recording it and we're just going straight to January. <laughs> so it's so weird. Fuck you, it's January. It's weird for us. Um, but January, you know, is not the hottest month what? of the year. Um, and there's some motion pictures on this list. Um, but yeah, uh, we saw The Grudge. The Grudge, yo, like, like a bus driving down a street and me crossing said street. I got struck by it came the, out the entire, of January. yes, <laughs> and like, what? We like watched well, Fuck that. you, New Year, New Grudge, baby. Fuck you, January. Fuck you, Grudge. Yeah, Grudge <laughs> was like the. F- yeah, right after you left the New Year's party, you walked into a screening of The Grudge. Still hung over, like, Still- oh, I guess is what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they made a new Grudge movie. Uh, Sam Raimi and his friends. All oh, those crazy cats. Um, the director of. Um... The eyes of my mother. The eyes of my mother. Yes. Yeah, crazy. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> I mean, uh, so the so the setup for this Grudge movie, it is not a remake of the uh, first Grudge movie or Sam Raimi's Grudge movie. Well, actually, it's weird. It kind of assumes that some Grudge movies happened before it, some yeah. Grudge incidents, yeah. but not directly the Sarah Michelle Gellar one? I don't know. But I think it I think it probably implies that it does take place um, around the same time as the Sarah Michelle yeah, Gellar one. Yeah, because this movie takes place in like 2005 or 2004 right. or something. Yeah. So right. it's like You're right. trying to send that message. But I haven't seen any of the other Grudge movies uh, besides this one. And so. The Grudge vs. The Ring. And that, yeah, that's a great hell movie. Yeah. That's a fucking great movie. Uh, so yeah, so The Grudge, so the, the setup is that the person who is caretaking for the person who is living in the haunted house, the famous grudge house, uh, she's like, yo, this is crazy. I gotta go. <laughs> and she leaves, and she takes the gosh darn grudge with her. Um, and so, yeah, so now it's in the United States. Did they say where? But, like, she becomes oh. her own grudge. Yes. Basically. Which I didn't know that that was That sounds cheating. I don't know about that. That, yeah, that sounds like know. you're a... Uh... So, it Whoa. feels like, like the idea of, like, an American remake of The Grudge... But, like, an American went to the grudge house yeah. and then went home and then made her It's like, what if Sam Raimi yeah. totally had no yeah. disrespect was, for the Japanese yeah. heritage of the movie? It, it and just... was very muddy. I found myself confused sometimes yeah. of what was happening. Yeah, Especially because, like, it jumped around so much. But yeah. it didn't jump around in a way that, like, made, like, each... Like, you learn a thing and that makes the next sequence more interesting. It's just like, all right... What's the story here? Yeah, and what Ryan's alluding to, there is an A-plot where we are following a police officer and her uh, son, and she's all like, wow, that's crazy. And the, I guess her, the person a above grudge? her. That's why. Yeah, the person <laughs> above above her, she's all like, we don't talk about blah, 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 blah. Um, and she got, she has to dig. He's like, do not go in there. <laughs> in reference to the grudge house. And so then at some point someone says that that house is grudged. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so we, we see sort of the stories of what has happened since the opening of the movie where it's like, she came back to America and the grudge, she became not the grudge. Sarah Michelle Gellar. Not Sarah definitely. Michelle Gellar. I feel like we're making this more complicated than it needs to be. It's a very weird It's a movie. very yeah. weird movie. But we are told it is not just one singular character's story. No. We are given bits and pieces of other people who have been in this house 
since that lady came back. Yeah. One of those being John Cho. Yeah. Um, family man himself. Family man himself. Realtor. Realtor. <laughs> <laughs> um, he dies, unfortunately. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. See, my I, thing with this movie is I think that it does... Most of it is very bad. Like, I'll say that. Most of it is very bad. But it has some stuff going for it. And I think that it's a lot better than a lot of people are giving it credit for. Because I've been seeing people out there saying that it's the worst movie they've ever no, seen that's at the hyperbole. theater. And that it's that's so that terrible. January, that's yeah. that January energy like, coming like, at you. Uh, compared to other January horror movies. Like, put bad. this next to the fucking Bye Bye Man. <laughs> like, this is pretty Whoa, bad. whoa, 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 whoa. I know, I'm just Carrie, you gotta I'm stay cave, baby. You gotta, you gotta protect the business. I'm destroying my camp. <laughs> in my yeah. character thus far but like there's just certain elements of it that i personally really really enjoyed and there's s- some small moments in this movie that make me look more fondly on the rest of the movie and give it more of a pass like some of it i'm probably laughing at for the wrong reasons but like when <laughs> fucking lynn shay fucking jumps off the top of the stairs yeah. and hits her yeah. head and then hits the ground and instead of just like you know hitting the ground she fucking explodes so that's a good point so <laughs> I just, again, the grudge just hit me like a baseball bat at the side of my head and just was here in my house. And I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> uh, so I missed a lot of the marketing, but she went, uh, it seemed like she went, it seemed like the whole bit of this movie was that it was rated R. That was yeah, like the whole bit right, of this. And yeah, once yeah. I saw the marketing after I saw the movie, I was like, oh, that's the whole bit that this one's R on like the, like the other movies that yeah. are PG-13. I see. Uh, that's a bad bit. But it made this more interesting. It made it more interesting. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, a lot more possibility space there of yeah. Lynn Shay mutilating herself. Cutting her fingers off. Cutting her fingers off. Like, she like loves in to another do. film that we yeah, saw this month, cutting. a lot of people cutting carrots the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I agree with you, Carrie. I think there is some interesting stuff, but it's still like a two star movie. It's not. Yeah. I think it's a. Yeah. Uh, I really, really, really adore the ending of this movie. It's a and good I ending. Think, I think some people in this room agree with me on it that. It made the movie yeah. a lot better. It was better. so fucking funny. It's it was. Just, it was an ending that just like, much like the month of January and the movie Grudge 2020, it hits you like a bus, <laughs> and it's very I love funny. It. And I felt, I felt like the audience like got silent too. It was so funny. It was so funny because people were like, "Is that <laughs> is just, the end?" Because it's like the fucking grab you by the hair, drag you down the hallway, cut quiet outside of the house. And the movie. Hold, hold, hold. Credits. <laughs> it's like that was fucking brilliant. And do you think? I think maybe that's the thing that people think that's the worst movie of all time. That might be the thing. Like, maybe. Un- unlike us, they're like, like, perfect. That's that was, smart. That hilarious. was. That's the one thing that tells me that, that you know what you were doing. That's a yeah. fun. That's a fun ending. Where everyone else that was like, that's fucking yeah, dumb. The lady in the front row is gonna be like, "What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is up, Kyle? <laughs> was that, <laughs> that happened? Yeah, I don't think she said that exactly, but there was some some unrest in the there front was, row. There was somebody. there was definitely some unrest in the front row. Which, like, look, if you go to the Grudge on opening night, like. Relax. We do again. I thought we were not good. That I thought that was gonna be an empty house. It was packed. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was thrilled. And we were laughing a lot. <laughs> At least I was. Um. Yeah, that's the grudge. I think and it, there's a lot of bad acting in it. Like that kid is not good. At no. All. <laughs> the her son, where he's just like, oh, oh mom, yeah, I love that you. was mom, that was bad. Remember what you do when bad. we are scared. <laughs> but that's the thing about we the close our eyes and go. <laughs> because that's the other thing like we know if and i wasn't thinking this deeply with the grudge because i was kind of had my mind turned off um because it makes sense this can't be the time we, we beat the grudge because we know it's not the time we beat the grudge because there's more shit that happens but it's also like this isn't the grudge this is just a different yeah, lady weird. who got You're this right. weird it's a weird timeline yeah. this weird grudge curse which like i guess i need to rewatch the original grudge to understand how that curse yeah, I works I, I, but in the context of the movie it just seems like if you die in like a really brutal in a angry way yeah if you're very angry when you die you will become an angry ghost and will i guess infect that anger onto other people and make them kill so, but like john show did that spoiler alert but there was no he didn't become a grudge no I don't but know. he did that yeah. so shouldn't he become boy it's grudge? playing loosey goosey with the rules yeah I don't know. If I, there's a if there's a house that's haunted by John Cho, ooh. 
carry ghost our ghost hunter show that we're starting up. Uh, okay. Go to our Patreon. Um, <laughs> I would go there. I would. I would. I would go in there. Okay. I would say it. I also want to shout out the one lady from the the one subplot where uh, she's gonna. Uh, have Lin Shea kill herself. Oh. The one fucking s- s- professional suicider lady. Yeah. She was my favorite part of the movie. Oh, yeah. She was so fucking funny. She was out of I a hope film. it wasn't a murder. Oh my god, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. I, I, I don't yeah, she know. was I think, good. I think this movie has uh, genuinely good parts in it. I and everyone's, yeah. everyone's just being... They're too critical. I think it's crazy that people have so much passion for The Grudge. I, mean, I, think, people I don't are, think you can go out here saying movie. mad about The Grudge. I, know. I, I don't yeah. think you can go to any movie in the, year, in the month I, of January I, and no. be critical. I think, I think, I think people critical. are looking to kick a horse. Probably, maybe. yeah, probably. They're like, 2020, this is the first movie, so let's... let's Come be. on, Grudge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Why aren't you the best? Yeah. Ugh. Like another movie on this list. Uh... Underwater. That a uh, run, uh, forerunner for best surprise of 2019. I don't know if I'm gonna say it's Ooh. it's interesting. Uh, underwater. Kirsten Stewart. This is the motion picture that Fox had in limbo for fucking ever. Yes. And uh, then Disney purchased them. It's like we got a clean house, baby. <laughs> right. This is done. All right. Uh, Says it. Get yeah. it out of here. Uh, it Kirsten... also tanked. Surprise! Because this movie had like they put it a out seventy million dollar budget. Oh yeah, well, it wasn't cheap. Yeah, yeah, and then it made like five million dollars. They set it up so, to fail. They knew they were gonna. Oh like, yeah, no, and like they Disney just had it. You know, they like, just put they it bought out. the house and it was and it was there. Like it's all like, right, fucking, I don't care. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Business is weird. Um, Let's get John Cho to sell this house. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So I'd love to if I was dead. Kirsten Stewart. <laughs> And friends, uh, who one of them is, I forget his name because I'm so... T.J. Miller mm. being the most T.J. Miller. <laughs> like, he can't... Like he, he knows he's in this movie for, like, 30 minutes and he has a role to play. It felt like... It years. felt like it did. 16 years. <laughs> it felt a lot. Anyways, um, if you are not familiar with this movie, it's basically Alien, but underwater. Yes. That's pretty much it. Um, they're all in this under... I, I they're will a say, lab I really yeah. like the opening shot of this movie where the camera just pound, uh, pans down underwater and it keeps going there for like a long yeah, time. Cool. It gives you a good sense of just like how far away from the world they are and the sense of like... They're deep, uh, some would say. They're deep and they're definitely like alone down there and fending yeah. for themselves. I'm definitely of the opinion that the ocean is a scary place. Yes. Yeah. We should yeah. leave 100%. it alone. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Um, and so yeah, her and her friends are on a sea lab. Immediately, the movie just shit goes wrong. Uh, something bursts and like the walls just start yeah. boom, 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 with water. Uh, and yeah, that's I appreciate that about the movie too. Just get go, right to get it. Right get to right it. to it. Um, and yeah, they they put on some like big ass Gears of War ass mech suits and they're like, well, there's like an old there's like another station all the way over there, but we're gonna have to manually walk on the bottom of the ocean floor <laughs> and get over there. And T.J. Miller was like, ah, dick didn't fucking shit. I don't like that. What, <laughs> what about Slender Man over there? <laughs> <laughs> fucking 20,000 leagues, am I right? <laughs> I, again, I made this joke when watching this movie, but the first, after after stuff goes down, the first like main character that Kirsten Stewart meets up with is T.J. Miller, and he's under a pile of rubble. And it's, she, oh, no, she's there's that the, other guy. There's the yeah, other but guy. he and dies the, immediately. Yeah, that was so a good really look. Think, I don't. I don't really think of him as just like, explodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because they all get together and he gives her the helmet that he knows is broken. Yeah, but like he's the first to die. Yeah, he's yeah. the first to die. So I don't really think of him as like a main. Like he is, I guess, but he doesn't really feel like the main group. Just I was they, pointing out that he dies they, first. He's the black oh, guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ain't that great. Um, uh, movie was delayed a lot. If, if you didn't know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, she finds T.J. Miller underneath a pile of rubble and saves him. Which is so unrealistic Bold. of anyone. <laughs> Just immediately, he's all like, oh, fucking bear, bear, bear. oh, yeah, I think he's like, oh, hey there. Um, what's he say to her? Something about, like, her boob. Her flat chest. Her... Oh, yeah, lady. You, yeah, you flat-chested elf queen or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 and it's like, okay, yeah. look, your legs are, like, broken. Like, <laughs> you, and you need help. Like, don't be, don't be like that. But, yeah, they're on this adventure, and then, uh, at one point, T.J. Miller dies. And the movie, and the movie suddenly that. becomes a lot more tense, and yeah, there's a lady, wow. and it becomes like, Crazy. Eh, yeah, it's a suspenseful, and it's. I think it looks good. I like the way it looks. I yeah. think 
Uh, they have they do a good job of making shots feel claustrophobic, but also feel open. That's why I, I like the the contrast, like when things are tense, but also it doesn't feel. I don't know. I like. I feel like I'm in a place. Like this is. I like yeah. that. I, especially when they're on the ocean floor. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, and I, I, and I, think, I enjoyed the the creature design. Too. Yeah, it's just Cthulhu. Yeah, it's, it's just Cthulhu. Yeah, it's, it's Cthulhu it's and many Cthulhus. <laughs> yeah, it's I great. really liked the fucking. Uh, hallway full of little noodle Cthulhu's and before you know it's Cthulhu yeah. Yeah. when you're still like ew creepy bug things and yeah. then he lifts up his <laughs> fucking paw or whatever and it's just all little tendrils yeah. coming out of it so I was like that's awesome and then the whole time I was like man y'all really fucked up you guys did a big <laughs> stinky oh. here <laughs> um and then the ending again it made sense that she killed this kind of sacrifices herself I, I will I- say her ending monologue voiceover that's that was bad. That was really bad. I don't remember it. I mean, um, it was it was it, I don't voiceover like monologues are always like a little rough. Like random narration. Random narration. <laughs> you gotta nowhere. sound deep, and it's gotta be yeah. like uh, yeah. Like it makes sense in like the best of times. In, like, worst of times. <laughs> you know, movies that are based on like novels. I feel yeah, because like they're very much like from like a perspective of a character. But like when it's you know a movie, it's its own thing, and like you have this like narration from nowhere. It feels weird, and she gives this really weird monologue about life or whatever, and then it ends with, like, I'm gonna burn this fucker down. <laughs> and then, and then it all blows up. And it's really... Don't like that. It's dope. <laughs> it, I don't don't like the monologue. Yeah. But, you know, that ending was... I felt very good. I like, um, the, set, I like the design of, like, the, the sea lab itself. Mm-hmm. I like the suits. I liked it. It's, a, it's fine. Yeah. I feel like this movie's gonna... I feel like people are going to... I think this movie's going to find a following, um, and they're going to blow it up to high heck, even though mm-hmm. it's fine. It's all right. It's okay. I like it. It was my pleasant surprise of the year so far. I'm glad it was okay. Uh, weathering with you. Speaking of water. Speaking of water, am I yeah. right? Uh, are you familiar with the movie Your Name? I love Your Name. I my, love it, too. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, in seen. the year 2019, or 2020, I decided that it is a five-star film and one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm very happy about uh, I this. I love it. Very much so. Uh, they made another one of those. They made another Your Name. Yeah. But with water. But with water. And I a little it. child, man. Yeah. And he's annoying as fuck. I oh hate my, that kid. Oh, wow. We're already going there. No, we? okay. Uh, uh, so, Weathering With You. Let's get this set up. So, yes, this is the next movie from the folks who brought you uh, Your Name. Uh, Rad Wimps are back at it. Oh, uh, boy, are they. There's no English track. Well, there's one English track. Yeah. Uh, that's it's pretty good. Um, so the setup for this movie. Uh, oh, should we spoil this stuff? Uh, I, I really don't want to get too... Yeah, insane. there's some stuff in yeah, this. Yeah, there's some stuff. But, okay. Um, so there's this kid. He's sort of a runaway from his family. He, they're, like, on another island in Japan. Yeah, they live in, like, a small town. And he's in Tokyo. He's come to Tokyo. Uh, and so he's trying to survive, you know, trying to find a job and, like, trying to find a place to stay, but... Because he's 15, you know, he has trouble... Yeah, and nobody will that. really give him, like, a hotel for very long. Yeah, yeah, and... yeah. They so... won't give him jobs just because of... That's just how things are there. Um, and then he runs into a girl. Yes. Um, and... Works at McDonald's. Works at McDonald's. <laughs> straight up at McDonald's. Straight up at McDonald's. Nice. Straight up, like, the most... HD anime Big Mac you've ever seen in your fucking oh, life. It looked so it good. It looked real good. It looked so good. <laughs> Just like a pillowy soft bun. Man. Sesame seed bun. <laughs> it's good. Nice. Man. I could... I would sure love yeah, but she, right the, now. but the girl give, like, gives him this Big Mac. Big big act of kindness. Um, And then, without getting too... Without just saying everything like point by point, eventually they start like this small business because uh, she informs them that she is a... um. Uh, what's it called again? Is it Sunshine Girl. Sunshine Girl. Sunshine Girl. So if she prays, she's able to uh, bring um, sun- yeah. sunlight. The... And lately in it's Tokyo, been raining it's been raining like every day consistently. So they open up this business. So if people wanted to, there'd be sunlight in a particular area for a little bit of time. They would pay them. Yeah. Um, like a Craigslist that. dealie yeah, where it's yeah, like, yeah. hey, hire the Sunshine Girl. And I got I, a market thing. And I absolutely love this movie. It's so cute it and is cute. adorable, and the animation's great. It isn't as good as Your Name. I'll say that much. Yeah. I know George agrees with me on it's that. It's very much not. But I think what this movie does um, with its characters and just the the world it's building is fantastic and 
makes you cry every time, and I just adore it so much. It has some things, you know, that I know are going to be uh, controversial about it, uh, mostly being uh, a certain connection to another film it has, as well as the ending. There of is it. a, yeah, there is some stuff it's like. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it feels in this. Because I could feel, I could feel with, um, I could, I, I feel with like the stuff in about the middle of it, when it like alludes. Once it alludes what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. I felt the crowd, I felt the crowd's having two different reactions. There was you who was like, fuck this. I, I, and and then, I didn't even like, I wasn't even trying to be obnoxious. No, no. It just happened. Like like when the doctor checks your fucking funny bone, it just happened. I was like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. And then, and then the woman next to me was like, oh. And like, it was. I love how you're always in the middle of the two, I, I know. The two juxtaposed emotions. I know. I thought it was fine. I have no problem with it. I think it's, I don't have I think a problem with it. I think it's unnecessary. It, and it, and it direct, oh, oh, no. It definitely is like, unnecessary. remember? What? It's oh. unnecessary. You guys remember? And then I totally get people who don't like the ending because it is kind of... It is, it is it, weird. It is. But it, I do feel like people are probably reading too much into oh, it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, unless yeah. Unless they... But they have an opportunity to... Because I remember walking out of the theater and people be like, oh, yeah, I guess that's fine then. I guess. And it's like... Okay, oh relax. It's a fucking anime movie, okay? About two, exactly. kids, about two I, kids falling in love. Let's I relax. Have, it was a, super sweet. I have a guess about what might it's happen. It's not that hard to guess. I'm not gonna... I won't say it on yeah. there. I can say it okay. off mic if I remember. Um, Because I know I'm right. Because yeah, I'm just so insightful yeah, yeah. about that kind of thing. <laughs> George, you were less hot on this. It's, yeah, so I this movie... absolutely love it. Uh, it it's definitely... <laughs> it's hard. It, it's very hard to... It, it sort of reminds me of Hereditary and Midsummer, right? That's sort of the sophomore slump, I do right? Not like this. Compared. No, I'm oh, saying like oh. there is this like how I feel about it. It's a sophomore slump. Um, but to be fair with this one, they very much invite it to be you know look at like these two movies. Like they do. They invite that, it, so that makes it easier. It's fa- I feel fairer for me for doing it, but. Um, it's it's gorgeous. I don't think it's as gorgeous as well. It's tough because weathering with you is it's really a, there is fantastical elements to it. I mean, this is a little girl who can fucking control the god darn weather. Um, and it's raining all the time. Yeah, it's raining in every single scene yeah. of the movie. Um, and they, they had to draw that, George. They, Not understand like the work. <laughs> sure, but it's it's a big thing That's when incredible. It, a big thing with and this, the water does weird things. It it's does great. do weird things. The big thing with me for this movie is that I did not like the lead character. Um, mm. If he felt a little whiny to me, he felt a little too precocious and a little too precious, um, which has been a big deal- thing with me. Um, I really like the the female character. She's mm-hmm. and I love her brother's great. I love okay, that kid. Okay. Thought, that kid's great. I thought at first you were like, I didn't like him. Um, I like Allison Bree's character. She's uh, there's. There's she a, was she was the the cousin yeah. of the journalist. There is a Miss Okudera analog there. Uh, I've seen people comparing them to. It's no Miss Okudera, not even close uh, in terms of character. Um, that's Alison Brie's character. Uh, and Lee Pace's shit dad uh, is just he's fine, I guess. I didn't. Yeah. I don't like what they do with him and the the kid. He's definitely one of those kind of like anime. Yeah, like, and he like, doesn't like like the reluctant father figure. And they don't really do anything with him. He just kind of has his moment where like, oh, I'm this character. I gotta have my flip, and he does it in my like. I don't know. Yeah. Um. The my big yeah. I just didn't connect with it, and it's certainly it's. Weird that they invite the comparison. They do. And because they do straight up. When this movie is so smaller compared to Your Name. When you mm-hmm. think of Your Name and the cosmic fucking shit that happens in that movie mm-hmm. and the sweepingness of it and the epicness of it, it's very weird for them to invite it because I think, for me personally, I, I, I honestly don't think there's a comparison. Because yeah. uh, I, I think this movie is in the shadow of Your Name. I rewatched Your Name after immediately after we you walked did. out of this, and Your Name for me clicked with me. Where I was like, it was like I never was like I love this movie so goddamn much. This movie makes me happy to be alive. I mm-hmm. love this gosh darn thing so much. It is wonderful comfort food, and I was like, man, why the fuck did they invite the comparisons to this movie? Because this movie just every shot just outclasses it, and they have moments where they force that 
epicness, that scan, and like, like the montage part, where like, we're doing the sunshine thing, and he's yeah. like, I'm falling in love, and I love this girl, and he's like staring at the sky, and it's fucking doing this, the, the, it's adorable, to do, it's trying to do the it's damn, so cute. the thing with the skylight, where he's all like, whoa, a fucking sky, or whatever the yeah. fuck with the comment, it's like, Nah, dog. You're not doing it. It just feels trying too much. Look, I feel like this movie and your now. name <laughs> are making like this genre of like anime teen movies that are just like so sweet and wholesome. I don't need and, like, the John and... Green of fucking anime. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. Because if it's the John Green of anime, then someone has some horrible disease, and they're all just monologuing weird artistic English uh, class. Guess bullshit. what, Ryan? Did you see Weathering with You? <laughs> No, not not as not as much. Not as much. I don't like this. I do not like this. Weathering with you is fantastic. It's um, it's fine. I really love the Radquip song where um he is like falling to like catch her. That song slaps hard. Mm-hmm. I've listened to that a few times. It's yeah, listen to a few. Other, yeah, there's a there's a female vocalist on this one as yes, well. Yes, I like yes. her song as well. She's Anyways, great. I don't know if there's anything else to say about this other than just rambling. Um anime it's anime. It's uh, there's there's. It seems like there's more anime this year to watch. I'm thrilled. See, it's, it's a year of anime. Um, so that's why I'm with you. Um, yeah. The next movie is VHS, and I'm bummed I didn't see this. We talked about it on the last podcast, not the end of the year, <laughs> right? But the one in December, the last month podcast, five years ago. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is sort of a. To me, it looked like a public access network sort of deal. Yeah, it feels yeah. like it could be like an Adult Swim. Yeah. Kind of oh, definitely. <laughs> sketch show. But basically the setup of this movie is that this kid receives a VHS camera for Christmas. And he starts filming everything. And they find out that they can record the TV if they plug the TV right. into the camera. So then this movie is part him recording stuff in his daily life, and then it'll go between the different shows that are on TV. And then, like, flipping through the channels, like, yeah. late at night. It's so cool. <laughs> I love it. And uh, it's all shot on VHS, too, so it just has that old-ass look shot to it. Shot on shitty old look. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> but... I love this movie so much, and it's it was one of my favorite theater experiences ever. Going to see it the second time because everyone was just dying oh, laughing. Because yes. when I saw it the first time, I was there by myself. Like the theater wasn't empty, but I was the only one. Like I didn't see it with any of you guys, and I was dying laughing. So then when I was taking everyone to see it, I was like, I hope this movie is yeah. actually funny. I hope I wasn't just in a weird mood. And everyone was fucking losing their shit laughing at it, and it was so fun. But yeah, there's just different, the different shows all work really well together and there's, they have smaller segments that are like the commercials and they'll have even smaller segments when they're just on like the, the channel listing channel where it Mm -hmm. has all the shows scrolling. There's so many just fun details in this movie and it's, and it, it, it has an emotional resonance to it too because it's not just the funny shows there's it goes into like a deeper drama in this kid's life and then it goes into fucking a little bit of horror and it's just it's so good it's so fucking good i've already decided that it's my favorite movie of the year i I, I mean i'm sad that that was the last day they were showing it too um so yeah i hope don't worry george it'll it'll come to vhs soon i'm so excited for that vhs release (laughs) um but yeah i i already want to watch it again just because the 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 humor in that movie is so quick it's so good. And there's, and like, there's not, when they flip through the segments, there's not really one that you're like, oh, no, they're getting back to not this, this one. Not this again. Yeah. yeah. Everything's like, oh, man, I'm so glad they're showing more of this. <laughs> um, and that's so, that's such a weird relief. Because in any, like, I guess, anthology, 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 anthology kind of thing. And that's not necessarily what this is. Is At some points, it feels like a clip show, I guess. Yeah. Um, but there's always that those few ones that just yeah, don't yeah. hit, but like all of these hit in like different ways. It's all different kinds of absurd humor. They definitely are all absurd. Yes. Yeah. And especially as the movie goes on, they, it gets <laughs> it's a little weirder, weirder. Gets weirder and weirder, and it's like, well, why, why did and, I catch that uh, on TV? And then reality starts to break. You know. Oh just yeah. Stuff. This oh, movie yeah. does stuff, and it's what, fucking cool. I remember when I first noticed that <clears> stuff <throat> happening because I was just like seeing. 
I was just seeing the movie as it was at first, and then mm-hmm. I slowly started noticing that yeah. stuff go on in the back, and I was like, oh. Uh, ooh, ooh. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, damn. But yeah, this movie is definitely worth checking out. And if you're wary about it, it's only 80 minutes long, my dog. Oh, yeah, so it's a quick it's one. Like, quick it movie. Does, it, it feels longer because there's so it much does. going on. Yeah, there's a lot of content in this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. There's I'm looking like, forward to watching it. Yeah, there's like a fucking Nightmare Antiques Roadshow, fucking uh, people, Bob Ross, a Bob Ross kind of thing. There's a, a fucking a concert kind of setup with a girl in her basement showcasing local bands and uh, what am I forgetting? The, uh, the like the, the weirdo porn movie. The weirdo porn the, movie. Um, the um, oh, the fucking uh, the witch. <laughs> the crime, the true crime documentary. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the detective show. The, the fucking, uh, what am I, the Home Shopping Network people. It's the, yes. There's just so yes, much yes, good yes. shit in this movie. It's so great. And I yeah, there's it. two, like, shopping things. There's, like, the, 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 the actual Home Shopping Network and the guy who, like, rates antiques. I don't know if you mentioned that yet. Yeah, the Antiques Roadshow. Yeah, yeah, thing, that's yeah. the one you're talking about. Yes. Very good. Ah, uh, so good. Seek mm. it out. This is one of those, uh. Again, we're somehow fortunate that in a, in our little movie market of hooking Omaha, Nebraska, yeah. we get a lot of shit that comes through, and this is sort of one of the. I feel like it seems kind of obscure. It kind of was mm-hmm. in our yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see it. It's small enough that when I tweeted the director, he liked and retweeted my tweets. <laughs> <laughs> um, next movie, uh, boy howdy, The Turning. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> So I went to see... Who put it. this out, first of all? I have no idea. Do we know it's a... I, Kimberly, tell, tell us what it's about. I'll look up some information. Uh, so I went to watch this after I watched Little Women. Really? I, yes. Oh, wow. I was like, I don't. I just want to go see some movies tonight. And I saw Little Women, and I was like, wow, that was so good. Because I, re- I was planning to double feature them if I felt up for it. And then I really loved Little so Women. You were so filled with life and hope. I was like, and oh, hope man, wow. And so then I was like, maybe, maybe I should just go home. No, I was like, maybe I should just go home and reflect on nah <laughs> so that i immediately went to watch the turning and <laughs> so uh the turning is a universal pictures distributed universal uh, does it again baby. Uh, <laughs> production companies are dreamworks uh Amb- amblian and vertigo entertainment what yes amblian yes what the fuck? <laughs> yes. Um, and according to the first paragraph of this Wikipedia article, it started development in March 2016 and was described as a passion project for Steven Spielberg. Yeah, if it's Amblian. Yeah. What the what fuck? What the fuck, dude? Yeah. Um, as I'm going on, I won't read into it. Um, it changed directions a lot. Um, <laughs> Carrie, you probably know a lot. You, can probably, you probably got the sense of that when you're watching the movie. Um, but yeah, apparently this movie is like absurdly bad it's not great yeah <laughs> like everything i've heard about this is like people are like oh like so just a waste of time basically yeah i mean basically what everyone says about the grudge <laughs> but like it actually is the grudge is way better than the turning i know i'm probably the only person on the face of the planet who feels that so way so what is the turning but even about yeah. it's about this lady who gets hired as a live-in governess for this little girl whose parents died in a car crash and so she is moving to this big spooky house and she's going to be taking care of this little girl and it's just the little girl and this uh like housekeeper lady this elderly lady who has been with the family for years and years and years and uh so it's just her like taking care of the little girl but then she keeps alluding to her older brother who's at boarding school and they talk about this groundskeeper who used to work there but he died and they keep alluding to the former governess who left suddenly and then fucking Finn Wolfhard shows up and he's the the troubled older brother who got expelled from boarding school for attempting to kill someone. Oh, I and hate to see uh, it. <laughs> yeah. So then as it goes on, it's just her she has like the journal of the previous governess and she's like flipping through it and seeing how stuff was getting weird between the governess and the groundskeeper. And then <clears throat> Also, I should mention, before she left to live in the house, she visited her mom, who was uh, at a mental asylum, and she was in a drained swimming pool painting, 
And uh, she's like, I'm going to go, Mom. I'm going to leave. She's like, okay, bye. So then she's at the house. And then, uh, then she starts to unravel this mystery of this whole situation of this family and what went wrong. And she keeps seeing spooky ghosts everywhere. And she's getting tormented. And then she finally solves it. And she's like... She gets a package from her mother, first of all, and it's like an already open envelope and she takes it out and it's just these black pages that like match the kind of art that her mom was doing, but it's completely black and there's kind of holes in it. So it's just like charcoal etchings. And then she goes on to solve the mystery of what happened. Basically, the groundskeeper was being a creepo to the previous governess. He ends up assaulting her and then murdering her and throwing her in the lake. And then the governess is like, the current governess is like, we got to get out of here. We got to leave. And, uh, and there's also, I should mention, there's also very weird sequences where, cause it's implied that Finn Wolfhard was real chummy with the shitty groundskeeper, the, the bad influence guy. Mm-hmm. And there's parts where it tries to make you think that he's like possessed by him or something. Cause he'll be like flirting with the governess. And I'm just like, I don't need this. I don't mm. need Finn Wolfhard telling this grown lady that she looks sexy up on the horse. <laughs> and it's it's weird. But, uh, so then she rounds up the kids and, she, and the, the nanny lady and, not the nanny, the housekeeper lady ends up getting killed by the ghost. She pushes, gets pushed off the stairs and they're leaving and they get to the gate and the gate opens and uh, I'm basically just telling the ending, by the yeah. way, because the ending is the weirdest part of this movie. <laughs> And so they get to the gate, the gate opens, and they're driving out. It's like, oh, they made it. But then it, like, pauses and goes back, and it zooms out, and it's back at her looking at the charcoal Wait, etchings. Wait, the movie pauses. Like, it, like, it's dro- like, it's her driving, and the camera, like, zooms out. Uh-huh. And then the, the car, where the car was on the screen, is now one of the holes in the charcoal etching. So it's like, we've gone back in time. And it's like, oh, that was all just a fantasy. Her escaping with the children. And I was like, mm-hmm. what? And then it cuts back and it's her holding the etchings and being weird and being like, you see ghosts, right? To the kids. And they're like, no, we don't see any ghosts. And then then the girl, the little girl is like, why is she so crazy? And so then it's like, what? what? So and then she just kind of stops and it zooms into her eye and you see her, like, she it's implying that she's had a full mental break and that the ghosts weren't real the whole time or something. And then it goes into her eye and you see her back in the swimming pool from the beginning of the movie and her mom is painting. And then you see the mom turn around and you see her look at her mom, but we don't see what she sees, but she just screams and then the movie ends. And I was like, what the fuck was this? <laughs> it, sounds, was it sounds like the movie didn't finish. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so huh. m- my theory, my working, what I think is that she was the previous governess. Yeah. And then her mental break, it's just her fantasizing this thing where she's back at the house and figures everything out and solves everything and ends up escaping. But I don't fucking know. It was just one of the most abrupt <laughs> endings in the history of me watching abrupt endings. It made me think of The Devil Inside. It's not as bad as The Devil Inside because it's an actual ending, kind of, but very abrupt <clears throat> and weird. Well. Mm. Very jarring. I'm more interested about the production of this movie. If <laughs> yeah, Amblin and Sc- <laughs> DreamWorks were involved with this fucking thing. Yeah. Interesting. Hate to see it. I guess. I hate to watch it, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Not, not great. Well, that's the turning. Film Wolfhard's finest work oh. in 2020. Uh, yeah. Is there any Stranger Things this year? I don't fucking care. Uh, Man, season three is real part, good. Season three is really real good. good. You would like season oh, three. Mm. I'd hate to say it. <laughs> um, uh, but we all feel very positive. I think, Ryan, do you feel positive about this? Next yes. Year? Color Out of Space, Hell Richard Stanley's, HP yeah. Lovecraft's Color Out of Space, the movie. Dude. <laughs> Um, so we mentioned this briefly on the December episode, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. We talked about it because Carrie was like, oh, this is the Nicolas Cage movie that looks like Mandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I was like, cynically, I was like, oh, does it look good or does it just look like someone thinking Mandy because yeah, yeah, Nicolas yeah. Cage will take anything? Am I right, folks? 
Um, I think it's from the same people who It's the did producers. Mandy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because yes. Elijah Wood is producing yes. it. Oh, and he man. produced Mandy. He's got some great taste. Yeah. <laughs> and, Ri- and Richard Stanley is actually a great director. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a very niche. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, was, I, didn't, I didn't know any of his stuff, but I have a few friends who are like. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I have a few friends who some are like from that really movie. into that kind of thing, yeah. and they were really hyped about this movie yeah. because of him. And I just mostly know him for the documentary uh, Tw- "Lost Soul." Yeah, yeah, that's yep. what I know him from. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, he's he's back at it. Um, so yes, this is an adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's "The Color Out of Space," mm-hmm. right? Um, which I guess was that tra- that old trailer we saw at Alamo with uh, Will Wheaton. Was that that? Ad- we didn't do. I didn't. Was supposed to no, do. No, that was the curse. Right, but was but that an the, adaptation of this story? Maybe because it I was very it similar. Like it it yeah. seemed like it. Because um, yeah, H.P. Lovecraft's story's been out there for a hot minute, so yeah. they've been redone. But yes, this is uh, Richard Stanley's uh, adaptation of this movie with Nicolas Cage uh, in that color from out of space. It is. The curse and, is based on the short story, The Color Out of Space. Okay, because it seemed yes. almost exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, except this movie is drenched in pinks and purples. Uh, it is very Lovecraftian in the reanimator, the body horror fucking <laughs> sense. Um, it is Nicolas Cage absolutely fucking going all in and doing weird voices and just fucking <laughs> going ham. But it feels sincere. It feels like... It doesn't feel like he's just like... It doesn't feel like uh, someone walking up to a famous actor or someone's like, do the thing! <laughs> it feels like he's just actually committed to it. Man, this movie's fucking great. Uh, and it's also maybe... <laughs> is it genuinely good, Carrie? Or do we just love this nonsense? <laughs> no- or get Ryan, yeah. Do we just love this nonsense garbage? You guys definitely do love that nonsense garbage. I'm not going to lie, because I'm your friend. But I think... I don't love it as the level that you guys do, but I can look at it and be like, that does a lot of cool stuff with color. It definitely gives you this cool sense of everyone's losing their mind and everything's being weird. And when it goes crazy, it goes crazy. And it's both entertaining and, like, disgusting. <laughs> and it, it that is very fun. My, my one issue I have with it is, and maybe it's because it's based off a short story, I feel like it takes yeah. a long time to get. It takes a minute. It takes a minute. Yeah, that's what and I was it makes say. you feel like, like, what's this color doing? Because shouldn't it's it... like a it's like radioactive or some yeah. shit. Well, and it seems to have different effects on yeah. different people. It does, but like, it feels like it took a little. It feels like it hit a lot of people straight up because Nicolas Cage is like a normal dad, and as soon as the color hits, he start. <laughs> he's a so, look. He's he's as normal as someone who. Has to be played by Nicolas Cage. Could be. He's as normal as your a typical uh, deep woods alpaca farmer dad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like, as soon as like the color, the color meteorite hits, he's immediately doing his Donald Trump voice and being a little bit more aggressive than than usual. And even his kids are like, "What? What's dad, going on? You good? <laughs> you cool?" Yeah, and of course, like the um, dang kid with the stupid glasses is the first ones like to see the weird shit that's right. going on. Yeah, and fucking. Uh, Haunting of Hill House ass kids. The haunting of Hill House yeah. ass. Man, and their fucking goth fucking Wiccan ass fucking daughter. daughter um, who's like the most... Honestly, she's the weirdest out of all of them. Like, what yeah. the fuck? She's a little different. She's a little crazy. <laughs> um, she's not like other girls. I hate to say it. But yeah, I think... Um, yeah, like the structure of it is like... Apart from it just being like kind of pretty genre ch- nonsense... Um, it's just put together so well, uh, and the stuff that is the tasty little marshmallows, uh, which mm-hmm. are the fucking part with the goddamn alpaca monster. It's beautiful. Fuck, dude. Wonderful. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, man, Carrie, I don't know. It's, it's real good. It's I- so, it's like everything that I could have wanted from someone who told me that they're going to do a Lovecraft movie starring Nicolas Cage. It's like... It makes you, you wonder yes. why that hasn't happened yet I know, yet right? Already. It just feels like such a correct movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if it, anything, I think that the some of the dialogue at the beginning is a little stupid, but I yeah. think that that just kind of adds to the fun. So I, I yeah, it makes it, it but, yeah, but I don't know. It makes it feel I don't even know. I guess again, it it feels like 
A, a shitty genre movie. Yeah. I don't know. When they're but. trying to convince me that they're a normal family at the beginning, yeah. I'm not buying it. But once all the weirdo stuff starts happening, it's yeah. like, okay, now your acting yeah. choices are starting to make a little more yeah. sense. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think the son was the most normal character in that whole family. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it's pretty fantastic. I think by the time this episode probably goes out, it's probably not going to be in theaters anymore. Um, but this is definitely the kind of shit that most theaters won't play. And I love it so much uh, if you get the chance. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I think it's, it's just, every, it's just junk food for me. It's everything that I wanted oh, it to yeah. be. It's delicious. I love it. Um. I'm glad that everyone likes it so much. I, I, I really, I think the part that got me the most is when Nicolas Cage was on TV. I think that was the funniest part. Oh, you know yeah, about? when he's doing the news report. Yeah. Thing. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like, that... no one have given me a comb, and he's just yeah, fidgeting, and then, and then, and then they like, change the subtitle on it. <laughs> to bourbon Bourbon infused... connoisseur. <laughs> bourbon connoisseur. <laughs> Oh yeah! It, it first, at first, at, at the end of his, it's it, at the bottom of the interview card. It's like UFO, um, UFO eyewitness or eyewitness. something. He's and like, then, I never said UFO. You said UFO. And then later, when he talks, like, well, oh, I had a glass of bourbon. Like the other day, it changes immediately to sl- UFO witness to slash bourbon connoisseur. <laughs> and it's so funny. It's like what? Ah! <laughs> So funny. Uh, it's it's so funny. God, Nicolas Cage is so fucking. Yeah, funny. that's like the subtle humor, and that's one thing I like. I I, I mean, a part of the the Nicolas Cage charm is he goes to zero to one hundred and eighty like on a dime. And just destroy. But I enjoy the the su- yes. I enjoy. Slam dunk. <laughs> I enjoy the subtle bits also at the beginning. It's so oh, good. Fuck. Um. Apparently, Richard Stanley's making a trilogy of these HP Love. That characters. sounds Ooh. fantastic. Hell yeah! Is Nicolas Cage going to be in all of know. them somehow? Oh man, uh, I would love that. Is he gonna play Cthulhu? <laughs> Cage Thulu. Uh, Cage Thulu. Oh, that'd be great. Um. So yeah, yeah. Colorado Space is fantastic. I look. Yeah. You fucking motherfuckers have gotten me. I haven't purchased Blu-rays in like five years, and I'm Ooh. buying them now. But <laughs> I absolutely want to love uh, Colorado Space again. It's that weird genre movie that it's like you kind of like. I don't know. It's like the thing like I want to have because it's not mainstream, man. I don't know. I, th- I like it. I think you need to get it's a like Shutter so- account because this is what hundred yeah, percent yeah, gonna go on Shutter. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So Carrie, you and eight other people are gonna be thrilled. I guess. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I think you you said this I think too, and Greg also said that you guys like this one a lot more than Mandy. Yeah. And I don't dislike Mandy. I just. I don't know. I, I guess I kind of wanted to... This this vehicle clicks more for you. Yeah. I, I think I prefer Mandy more just because... From... Mandy Moore? I love her. Mandy Moore? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love Mandy Moore. Um, but Mandy like, is like this... They're this two solid different. They're very thing. different. They're very movie. different. They're, they're, just both, they're just both very colorful. And, and featuring yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I feel like Nicholas... I feel like the red in Mandy really highlights yes. the craziness yes. Yes. that is Nicolas Cage mm-hmm. and the energy that it brings into it. The pink of Colorado Space definitely brings out the like, bizarro world aspects of it. It's also gorgeous. It's it a is very gorgeous. nice color. Yeah. Very, very, nice very coat. vibrant fuchsia. Very, and like as like the movie goes on and the whole farmyard gets like overwhelmed by the, the color like pink. annihilation plants also. Yeah, yeah this yeah, was the, very annihilation. And some of the music sounded kind of yeah. annihilation yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, love love the color pink, but I think in terms of Nicolas Cage vehicle and a color that represents his his vibe, red <laughs> blood red, makes it look blood red is the Nicolas Cage look, in my opinion. They're I both would, fantastic. They're both fantastic. I yeah. will say it's still. Blood. But one of them has Cheddar Goblin, so that is true. Mm. I am honestly <laughs> a George the fans. big fan of Cheddar Goblin. I forgot Goblin. about it. You, I I, meant, I heard you talking about Greg about Cheddar Goblin. I was like, ah oh, man. Oh man. <laughs> I hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I am genuinely surprised Terry Garland did not pop out of that meteorite. That would have been awesome. Yeah. <laughs> he was the color from Outer Space. The um, cheese from Outer Space. But yeah, I'm glad January was able... Like, well, I guess, you know, there's been some good stuff this January now looking back yeah. at it. My favorite movie of the year came out in January, VHS. And my second favorite movie <laughs> of the year, Color Out of Space. Um, Those will definitely stay at the top of my list the entire year. Uh, February, baby. Uh, the uh, the month for uh, I was gonna make a Valentine's Day joke, but I'm I'm mm. I'm nah, it's lame. Birds of Prey is coming out in February, which seems like a weird choice, but I guess like big movies just come out whatever the fuck because there's yeah. so 
Yeah, there's so many Marvel movies, so many slots they take up. So I think ever since Deadpool came out in February, like all those right. years back, right. now like there's always a February Marvel. We gotta movie. get the yeah, you're right, yeah. And that was only put in February as a joke too, which is weird because the joke for was Valentine's Day. Yeah, it was like trick your girlfriend into seeing a superhero movie with you. Haha, <laughs> fart noise. <laughs> um, but yeah, Deadpool's still a lot better than it has any right to be. I think me personally, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's it's true. not as aggravating as I thought it would be. No, two is pretty not great but birds of prey looks i'm surprised by how good i don't know how to feel about it i mean i mean i'm i love everyone in it uh Mm -hmm. i like the tone they're doing i love the style of it so if nothing else will be a very stylish movie but will it have substance i don't know who knows it's hard to tell uh from it but i love margaret robbie i'm liking where dc is heading um with their movies going forward and i think if this one knocks out of the park or at least does something interesting with the characters which is what in the end of the day, that's what you really want. From it's really, these it's really weird to me that you make Suicide Squad, and at no point you realize that you're doing a bad job <laughs> because they, it's it feels so apparent since Suicide Squad. I was like, oh, we did bad with that mm-hmm. one. It did not. It wasn't good. Oops. You're thinking like two years later, like they were just sitting in the boardroom, was like, oh. Oh, but Suicide Squad made a lot of money though. We screwed up. But yeah, like this movie is like feels like an absolute like antithesis to it. Or I don't fucking know. It's just like what. Um, but yeah, I I hope it's good. I don't know. It's just coming. I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready for the year. I wasn't ready for the Grudge, and then I was just on this treadmill of movies. Um. The Lodge. I thought this one was supposed to come out last this has year. Been on our list for like eight months. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it looks great. It looks yeah, really I have heard good. very good things about it to the point that I'm oh, worried. What's her, what's her damn name? The like lady in this movie. She's from American Honey and. Uh, I've never uh, seen American Honey. Fucking American uh, Honey. Uh, fucking. It's the Shia LaBeouf. Not to be confused with the other Honey movie with Shia LaBeouf. Honey Boy. I, I watched Honey Boy. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would, but it was still pretty. You good. You liked it more than I did. I yeah, think. it was yeah. pretty good. Um. But yeah, the lodge. She's the blonde lady from uh, fucking Greasy Andrew Garfield movie, Under the Silver Lake. Oh, Oh, that lady, and this is this is Riley Keough, and from It Comes at Night. I like her a lot. Oh, okay. And this is—is this the folk? This folk from Good Night, Mommy. Yes. Yes. Man. Yeah. Very good. Um, this this very much has Good Night, Mommy vibes in terms of setup. (laughs) Um. Yeah, it also has I'm... a kid from it from uh, the movie It. Oh as, yeah, uh, as a it's creepy got, kid. It's got the fucking the fucking internet kids. troll yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> knives out. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully this is the better one than the turning, which you know just like that's a hard thing to do. No. Um. But yeah, I'm very much. I'm stoked, man. I've heard very good things. I'm speaking excited. Of, speaking of horse girls, I thought they said house girl for a second. House girls. Annabelle comes house girl. Uh, Horse Girl is a You Netflix. saw a trailer of it before uh, we started. I, it's true. It's a Netflix original. Um, judging by the trailer, um, Alison Brie, who is fantastic, mm-hmm. uh, she plays this kind of weird um, horse girl, obviously. She's just kind of like socially inept. And she begins thinking that aliens are in her brain. And she then she's like, I think I actually have you know, a mental issue right now. Um, and it appears to be this sort of like psychological thing. Um, and it looks interesting. Uh, interesting enough that, you know, since I have a Netflix, like, 98% of the planet, I'll probably end up watching it. Um, but, yeah. It you don't like, have to, you know that? Uh, it's true, <laughs> I don't have to, but I will. And you cannot stop me, Dan. Weird. Um, but, yeah, I think it looks interesting enough, uh, personally. All right, I have no context of it that has Alison Brie, apparently. I don't even know what you mean. Like, she's a horse girl. Is she literally a centaur? What does that mean? She's a horse girl. I have no idea what that term means. Whoa! Whoa! It's the girl, what? It's the girl in every elementary school class who likes horses a little too much. Yeah. Oh, I know. Have you ever met a, I'm not familiar with this trip. This is the phenomenon that you Have you ever... Yeah, no. George, if you look like... I don't mean to, like, you know, be, be rude, but if you look at, like... <laughs> if you take five white girls, I'll just say about... Would you say, like, five... At least five or six. Yeah. Five or six. One of them is really into horses, oh. and that's like their personality yeah. trait yeah, yeah, yeah. in all of elementary mm. school. Like they're I, the one who does wants to make every project about horses. Always yes. talks about horses. Has horse facts, horse folders. I played a game with my friend at work a few years back where we went. We made a fake Tinder and we looked at girls' profiles and s- 
saw how many of them mentioned their horses or had photos with them and their horse. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot. There was a <laughs> lot really? of girls yeah. in, Whoa, in, in Nebraska who were really into horses yeah. and used dating apps. <laughs> uh, it was a really fun evening, and then I immediately de- deleted the dating good, app. Because uh, those are I was talking with a couple of my friends from work, and they... It was, it was years ago when we were at a village inn and me and my friend Ashley were talking about the horse girl phenomenon and our friend Emily, who uh, her dad is a farmer and she has cows for for uh, uh, state fairs and stuff. She's like, guys, I think I was the horse girl. <laughs> and me and Ashley were like, don't, no, we're done. You gotta leave. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. But yeah, I'm surprised you don't know anything about the horse Yeah, that's like girl. a thing. Yeah. yeah. That is well, that is a good for you, show. honestly. <laughs> well, I'm not watching this movie because I don't watch anything on Netflix. I don't watch anything. Period. I don't know why I'm you on this don't. podcast. <laughs> uh, Fantasy Island. Uh, this is a Blumhouse. Blumhouse. Yeah, new Blumhouse. Lucy Hale. <laughs> yeah, Blumhouse. Is- oh no. Uh, <laughs> Fantasy Island. This is the one where they're like, if you come to this island, we'll set up a thing where you can live out your. Deepest fantasy or whatever. Yes, oh, she yeah. wants to. She wants to get back at her childhood bully or whatever. Oh. And then it's like it's not real. It's all a simulation. Then it's like, but it might be real. Uh oh, it looks hilarious. It looks like a fucking Blumhouse. <laughs> yeah. I feel like a, a lot. Blumhouse puts out, has put out some good. Blumhouse puts out good in the world. Like they put out some good projects. They fucking funded Whiplash somehow. Yeah. Um. But the scariest horror movie Whoa. that Blumhouse has ever I think, like, somehow, like, they were really like, oh, do we have enough money to do this? Uh, jeez. This movie's gonna be something But else. a lot of them are just Don... We're gonna buy so many drum sets. A lot of them ah. are just very polished Don Draper ideas, that, like, marketable, that we can market to a good, like, uh, 18 to 35-year-old demographic, uh, cool... I don't know, like, there's just, like... Everything there's just some of their movies just feel so commercial. They feel very MTV. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> um, and them putting their name, their studio name in the titles as if they're you know Marvel, like Blumhouse is Truth or Dare. I think Blumhouse those, is Fantasy Island. I think that's just because those two titles. Well, because they're be so wrong. similar. They seem like other titles. So we gotta put something <laughs> yeah. to distinguish it. Truth or Dare was that case for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay like, movie. Yeah, sure. Charlotte's are the best of 2017. I don't even know anymore, man. George. George, I could guarantee you, you put it on the list when we made I, that. Was it 2017 or 18 is what I'm saying. I don't I know what fucking year it was anymore. I feel like it was last year. No, yeah, it was last year because we were talking about fucking Ronnie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> best of course goes to Ronald Rodney Rakowski. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was last year. Anyways, Fancy Island, I don't want to watch it. Aw. <laughs> okay, this will be the, the turning of February. Carrie, you're on assignment. Carrie, I'll, <laughs> I'll do it. I'll see it with you. Fuck yeah. yeah. Um, I won't. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. What else is there to say? Um, it's Honestly, still, yeah. <laughs> it looks bad. Why do people think it, it looks good? It looks fine. It looks it, like it, it looks, looks like a kid. It looks like a kid's movie. It looks know. bad. It should have looked horrible. It looks like though. Rango. What the wow. Rango's looks, so good. What do you mean? I've never, like see, never seen Rango. Rango's I was just, really good. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, Fine, it looks like... Babinski's Rango. Oh, that's Ooh. true. <laughs> Fine, it looks like Hop. I don't know. <laughs> I'll accept that. Okay. <laughs> My like, hot take. It looks like Peter Your Rabbit. Take. Yeah, that, that looks yeah, fucking miserable. <laughs> but yeah, ever since the new trailer came out with the new song, I think Sonic Design... People are like, oh, this movie looks incredible now. Mm. But it looks like the exact same movie, but it looks different. I think the editing is different. That's really... I don't know. I I, I don't just know. wish we had gotten Nightmare Sonic. Same here. I, I genuinely don't. It should be a bonus disc on the Blu-ray. You should just release it. You got it. I know it. they have it. You yeah. got it. Just put we it know, out. We know. We It'll know. It'll be when, us... when this movie gets a criterion. No, they got to start, yes, a, they gotta start yes. a really obnoxious hashtag, and then one of the five streaming services will put it exclusively oh, yeah, on yeah. there. That's how it'll work out. Exclusively to crackle.com. Give, night- Give me the nightmare cut. Um, yeah, are we watching Sonic the Hedgehog? I feel like we kind of have to, but I, I mean, I, I think I, I genuinely well might have run dry. I'm Sonic. I I have been Sonic the Hedgehog you boy since I was oh, a yeah, child. So I have no allegiances to Sonic yet. <laughs> <laughs> this movie might change that. <laughs> Who the 
heck is the guy with him? I've never seen that gentleman in my entire life. Uh, uh, the the dude, the yeah. like best friend, James Marsden. The he's guy like, from Red Dead Redemption. He wasn't, he wasn't he the guy in uh fucking Hop? The, no, not yes. Hop. <laughs> the Peter guy in, the Smurfs. He was in Enchanted. That's what I know him from. Yeah. He's the the prince. I've never the, seen Enchanted. It's pretty good. He's in some X Men movies apparently. As, Who isn't though? To yeah, be fair, that's true. As Cyclops, James Marsden, right? That's his name. No. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Cyclops. Anyway, Sonic the Hedgehog. You're probably gonna watch it. <laughs> Ben, Swar- ben Schwartz. Great. Yes. Ben love Schwartz is him. fantastic. He's hilarious. I love him. I want him to do Apparently more. he recorded uh like that se- the Sega bit, but they didn't use it in the movie. What? And he recorded like a bunch of octaves so you could play them all at once and it would sound like that echo, but he didn't. That's amazing. Wow, he has it as his ringtone that. currently. Oh my god. <laughs> and they didn't put it in the movie. I, I need to hear that. Last stuff left on the cutting room floor on Sonic the Hedgehog, it turns out. <laughs> um to all the boys, PS I still love you. Listen. To all the boys I loved before was fine. Yeah, it was fine. It was cute enough, but it's not like Lana Condor. That's who it was. Yes, that's who it was. She's very good in that movie. I think. I think it's just fine. I think. I think she can do good in other things. Um, I think people but... are. I'm sorry. I think the coming of age genre is a magnet that is very easy to attract people to it. Like, people, yes. like, really... And that's a good genre. It's, it's, it's a good feel-good junk food genre. Listen, I have my dumb color out of space nonsense. Uh, you can have your coming-of-age movie. I think people I should know. want better coming-of-age movies. Though. Listen, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I'm going to be that guy. But I'll I didn't like it. Booksmart either, so I don't know oh, what to you say. Suck yeah, I just don't... I just got to leave. <laughs> uh, but... I hate Noah Centino. I've said it before. I'll still don't know that guy until you guys like Charlie's Angels. It's in my mind he's the guy from Charlie's Angels. I guess that you guys. I hate. like how that's how you know him yeah. from. He's, I mean, I haven't technically seen any of his other movies. I've I just seen, know him as the Netflix. I've guy. seen his face, and he puts out really cringy tweets on Twitter. Uh, like, oh yeah, he did that weird acceptance speech that Lauren messaged me about. Where yeah. he said some weird nonsense that didn't make any sense. He does a lot of like he'll put out like tweets that like you've seen before, like the like people mm-hmm. who like reuse like mm-hmm. like oh this will get likes because this is like a universal thing. Like huh. I can't believe uh, uh, Chinese food is so good, right? <laughs> like the most basic white boy stuff, right. um, just for likes. Um, but yeah, he sucks. I hate him. I will not watch this. I don't dislike this movie. I think it's just fine. Yeah. I didn't see the first one. And it's fine. The guy is obnoxiously handsome in that movie. I hate him. <laughs> He's not, he's not, though. But he's, no, but he's, like, in the factory, like, the most, like, if we no, made a he is Ken like, doll, he's, man. He is, like, if you, if, like, you, drew, like, a police sketch of, like, oh, uh, he was handsome, I guess. <laughs> like, oh, he, like, it's like, oh, yeah, no, it's a Tito. Oh, and he's white, right. Cause, yeah. Uh, yeah, because of obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Um, but, yeah, um, I don't know if I'll watch this. Like, it's so easy to watch it because it's on Netflix. You don't have to watch it. I know it. I don't have to, but... You can watch know. some classic films. You can watch some instead, titty though. anime instead. Ooh. You know what? You're onto <laughs> something there. You're onto something there. Uh, Come to Daddy. This one was sort of a blind spot. I, again, it hit me. Like, I didn't know about it until like, I, yesterday. I saw the trailer for it the first time that I saw VHS, and I had seen the letterboxed page before, and just based on the title and Elijah Wood's haircut alone, I was like, I will be interested in that film. But so yeah, the trailer for Come to Daddy looks fantastic, and it's just basically uh, Elijah Wood meeting up with his estranged father and for the first weird time, stuff. and some weirdo stuff might start happening. Yeah, it looks it's, really low budget. Also, yeah, it looks really it Saban looks, Films. <laughs> Saban what? Films, they're back. It looks fantastic. <laughs> I'm so excited for this movie. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it'll be good, but yeah, it's a weird thing. I trust new Elijah Wood and his taste in his weird movies. That's mm-hmm. true. I love Transcend... No, not Transcend. Transference? Transference. He funded a video game. Oh, yeah, the video yeah, game. Yeah, that video he game. He was... 
He I funds a lot. I think was, he's just he a... was he was integral in uh, Nicolas Cage meeting up with Panos Cosmatos to be in Mandy. Yeah, like, he uh, was the connection there. And I, was like, I think uh, dude, I you think he's it. he's secretly one of like uh, he's like a venture capitalist and producer extraordinaire on all the genre weird shit you like. He, at this point. I supported. He he, he, he funded he, Bell Donna's Madness. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. He, he produced um, Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah there's yeah. a great interview. What on, else does Spectre Vision There's do? a great interview he he has they on do. Vice where him and Anna Lily Amapur are just smoking cigarettes talking about art. Oh, fuck yeah. And it's amazing. <laughs> I've watched it like 18 times. That's pretty good. He might have done Southbound. I might be making that up. Though. That sounds so like he might have been he's definitely, that. He's definitely he's, yeah, Southbound. He's a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's around. Uh, uh, so with us and the Elijah Wood, we make up the 12 people who have seen Southbound. <laughs> um... Anyways, the the call of the wild. Oh, this is, I, again. I almost forgot. This is the Harrison Ford dog. Harrison movie. Ford CGI, CGI dog. dog. This is a book, right? I think Probably. So. I assume I, every movie with a I, dog I, has a book. That's pretty fair. I've never thought about it. Like that. I just can't. I'm just so confused that. Harrison Ford, he's finally free of Star Wars. He's free. He doesn't have to work he's at all. He's free. But he made this. He's real passionate about the Call of the Wild. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe he liked Let the book. Let me look up this book cover. Yeah, maybe, maybe, he liked the book. maybe his like grandkids love this book. Maybe. That's it. And he was like, God, I just want to smoke weed and, and a, fly planes. It was a fucking Ian McKellen situation. Yeah. Like in fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, fine. But yeah, I just, uh, this looks like nothing. <laughs> That's a good book cover. Right? It looks like nothing. The Great Illustrated Classics book cover is pretty good. It's got a smiley dog on it. That looks like a classic book. <laughs> that looks like a book that, like... <laughs> I like that. I wish that That looks like a good. fake yeah. book. You know what I mean? I mean, like, yeah. It looks yeah. like you're handed a book, and it's like, oh, wow, look at that. It's a book. <laughs> well, because I was getting this confused with, like, Hatchet. Because I know I read Hatchet. No, this is not Hatchet. Well, I mean, like, because everyone was like, it's that book that you read in school. And I was like, I think... And also, I know I read a different one in elementary school, but I don't remember what it was called. I don't fucking know. But yeah. Anyways, that's coming out. Emma. Another book movie. Anna Taylor uh, Joy. What Jane book Aust- is this? Folks. Jane Austen. It's Jane, Ma- Jane, Folks. Jane Austen's Emma. Folks. Folks. Oh, the book is just Emma. The book's just yep. called Emma. Emma. Okay. I love. Anna yeah. Taylor Joy, and that's yeah. a thing I've realized. Right. I fucking love that woman so much. She is fantastic. She's great. Uh, I love her huge fucking eyes. <laughs> They're great. I love getting lost in them, being threatened by them. Um, and so I will watch this. Uh, <laughs> so watch it's this. a novel about youthful hubris and the perils of misconstrued romance. So I've heard because they say that in the movie, uh, a trailer. Uh, boy, how that's like the most focused home. I think. Fo- not Focus on that's a video game publisher. Focus, whatever the fucking shit. Focus Group. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, the, the company's called Focus. They're like Focus you, Features. Yeah, they're Universal's like indie arm. Like, yeah. Fucking. I should read this. Yeah. I have a Jane Th- Jane Austen anthology, but I haven't. I'll watch it. it yet. It seems fine. It looks pretty at least. Yeah, it looks. Cinematography cute. Yeah. looks good. I love Anna Taylor Joy in some fancy dresses. Oh fuck, dudes! You know what's next on this list? <laughs> Brams. I never. Boy two. I never saw the boy. Did you? Wait, did you have no idea the boy two was in production? No, you guys were I genuinely knew, stunned. No, I knew that it was in production, but I feel like I had been seeing tweets about it where people were like, "Is this movie ever coming out?" Like, because people like saw it in production like years ago, and they're like, "It's coming," and then no, no word for like a year, and then like I with would uh, see, unfriended, yeah. Too, so or I would the see people too. tweeting about it. When are we getting that the boy? Tra- when are we getting the boy two? Huh? And then the. But, the trailer surprised me, and I was just like, "It's happening!" <laughs> it's also called Brahms the Boy Two. Why? Like why? Because the iconic Brahms. Brahms. <laughs> what happened to Brahms and you? I don't know. Boy? I'll have to rewatch the Boy. I, I never know. saw Joey. the Boy. I didn't go with y'all when you guys saw the but, Boy. But, but Ryan, it's fine. Ryan spoiled it for you accidentally. Don Joe spoiled it for me. Well, no, I remember when Ryan spoiled it for you because uh, he was like, "Oh yeah, I wa- what's that other movie? That Australian Housebound. movie? Yeah, I watched." Housebound, by the way, after we were talking about this. I saw part. Housebound before then. Yeah. That's so why. Then, and then so I think that's what <laughs> triggered it. Yeah. It was so funny. So then you were like, wait, is that what that happens? At yes, the end that's of exactly the movie? I remember that very well. Yeah, Donna just spoiled so that to me because she wouldn't shut up about how I was like, I fucking knew it from the start. <laughs> <laughs> just what I say. I knew it. 
And I yeah. still have no idea what this fucking movie is about. So, anyways, the, is the doll spooky? I mean, the doll is gets... the doll is a doll in the walls. What's what no the the, the boy who they had thought died Bronx, Bronx. Bronx. He like got I don't remember the full. I'm gonna get it mixed up is with he a ghost? No, he's alive no, and no, living no. in the walls. No, he and... just moves the doll to make it yeah. seem like the doll's yeah, haunted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, I don't remember. Um, and but then did he die? I don't fucking remember. What happens? I to really, at the I end of really the boy? need to rewatch the boy. I really need I, to I think the it's boy. still on Netflix. I'll I'll rewatch it one of these days. But I remember the scene where uh, the because the lady comes to that house to flee her abusive boyfriend, mm-hmm. and he shows up there, and uh, he's like, "There, the the lady and the guy are gonna try and make money off of Brahms because they're like it's a, a living doll." And then uh, Brahms wrote on the wall like, "Get out of here, fuck you," or something. And then the the guy's like who did this and she's like uh was it the doll and he's like and he grabs it and like smashes it on a chair it's slow motion she's like no it's so funny i will not watch the boy what the fuck will will you watch brahms no i will not watch brahms the boy too god um i'll watch it okay The uh, Invisible Boy 2 Invisible Man so we talked about this in our end of the year discussions um, when we were talking about Elizabeth Moss and how mm-hmm. wonderful she is, um, Elizabeth Moss is haunted. So, so when that <laughs> oh oh boy, is this part of the dark universe? It was like no no originally, no. It, it isn't now, but I think they like took. They were going to make took the license or whatever. Um, basically, the dark, this is a Universal dark, Pictures motion picture. Basically, what happened is. They realized the Dark Universe stuff was not going to work out. because Damn. A- I'm so sad. I'm still sad Because it, was, it was a bad idea to begin with. My look at that tweet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they were originally going to have... They made that, that really funny um, like group photo where they had all the oh, yeah. set up and they had Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man. Oh my um, god, my funniest tweet to date. <laughs> still. Invisible Man? Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man and abusive fucking uh, guy. Ooh. <laughs> Weird. Oh no, no! But my funniest tweet to date is still when they put out the article announcing this movie, and now they were like, Johnny Depp was originally tied to this film, but he will not appear in the new one. And I was like, Well, no, dur! I know what invisible means. It's very good. I like That's that my a favorite lot. tweet I've ever done. And I'm like, gonna, I'm gonna blast it. I right like now. that a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, after that, they were like, Ah, oh, fine. We'll just let people do whatever with our properties. Um, because obviously the connected universe isn't isn't gonna work out. Mostly which, because they, they which like they don't even have a plan for the it. The Phantom of the Opera was gonna be in it and it was gonna be so fucking funny. Yeah. I'm so sad. So they could have gotten Gerard Butler back <laughs> to play. He's not doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that would have been so, so difficult for him too, oh I my bet. God. Um <laughs> But yeah, this looks good. Yeah, I, I like really what. I like Again, I don't going. love domestic abuse stories, but I like yeah. Elizabeth. Moss. You don't love them like me. I mean, no. Oh no. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, bad. Uh, uh, oh jeez. Uh. Um, but it look it looks like a great like the like what you would do for like the modern retelling of this, and the director's very make cool. It twisted. Well, who's the yeah, director? really. Um, he made um, upgrade. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Oh, I never saw it. It's uh, good. Neither have I, but I heard great. Things. I don't like that man. I don't like that. You don't actor. like him? He's yeah, but he in. Station. Oh, you're right. He's in. Well, he was in a, a bad video and a video game that very disappointed me last oh. year. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, but yeah, I I like Lee I, one now. Why do I? Yes, he's the one him. of the writers on Insidious. That's why I knew him. That's yes, the, the James Wan yeah. pal. All right. Well, yeah, I'll watch it. It's um yeah, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. This movie looks good. This looks like the most Apparently, French ass movie on <laughs> the fucking planet. Apparently, it's incredible. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I'm really sad that this didn't come out in time for our end of year discussions because yeah. I feel like it probably would have done well. Yeah, it's a weird release because we saw they were advertising this movie like fucking a while, a ago. while yeah. ago. Um, yeah, I, I didn't even remember what, like was it about until we saw um, a trailer for it in front of Color Out of Space of all movies. <laughs> So that's something. Oh, really? You avoided a trailer for that movie until then? Um, no, I didn't avoid it. I just hadn't it's, seen any. Really? In, in like, I got it in I, front I, of a few things yeah, at me the too. Alamo. I it had, wasn't that trailer. It was a different one. I got it when I saw Honey Boy at the Ruth Sokoloff Theater. Oh, nice. There was a Ruth Sokoloff movie. Yeah. <laughs> it would be Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Right, yeah. Just a weird, weird Portrait of a Lady on Fire in front of the Kalara Space one. That's weird, right? That's a weird call. That's a weird call. Guy. I mean, I appreciate it. I got to see the trailer. 
Um, and I don't know if I've seen it before or not. But I mean, it's it neon, great. so I assume neon puts any other stuff mm-hmm. in front of anything, mm-hmm. but yeah. mildly above, like, I don't know, fucking Is letterbox. Is it also group. a movie? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have no expectations. I hope I like it. I don't, I don't know. Nothing about it is yeah, moving me, but <laughs> it looks pretty at least. Yes. So that, folks, is what's coming out in February, and that is the episode for January. Boy, howdy. I wonder if, it, if you can hear us exhausted or my exhaustedness. <laughs> um, but I'm glad January turned out a lot better than I thought. Yeah. I'm glad I did not see the, the turning. One of the best Januaries we've had I in I think a few so, years. too. Yeah. I feel optimistic about the about 2020. Usually, it's January. We get the January energy. It's like, man. Usually, polar sticks <laughs> to the top of the list for a few months. <laughs> uh, okay, what if? What if we brought polar back? I love polar. Ooh. Remember uh, that Johnny Knoxville cameo at the beginning, and then he just gets fucking blown away? Mm. What a good movie. I'm surprised there's not a Polar 2. Netflix seems oh, like they would make a Polar 2. And I would watch Love it. it. Remember the fucking Vanessa Hudgens reveal at the end of that movie? Oh, that movie yeah. fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, you ran that four stars, okay? I'm not gonna let you... Listen. Yeah, okay? It's... Go ahead and try. <laughs> All right, well, that's the January, folks. Ryan, people wanted to follow you and your adventures as we start the new year. See where the fuck the grudge ranks on your list. <laughs> they shouldn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but if they wanted to, um, film, uh, film piece on Letterboxd is where you can find me. Um, read about how much I love Weathering With You and why it's a great movie and why George is a hater. It's um, good. My so, my little brother, who we saw it with, saw it like two more times after. Oh, really? And he's like, he was not hot on it either. No, he enjoyed it a lot better when he saw the Japanese with the dub. Oh, of course. I think would. I would too, because I told what a weeb. I, like, I love the English version of your name. Uh, I, it's was, very good. It's a lot, fantastic. a lot of work was put into that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Carrie, if people wanted to follow your journey into twenty twenty on <laughs> their on motion pictures. You can just search my first name, Carrie, K A R R I E. You can follow me at J Cruz Alvarez twenty six. I need to update my list of twenty twenty. Yeah. Again, at one point I put nineteen seventeen, and I was like, "Damn, that's not a movie from twenty twenty. Yeah, it's from nineteen seventeen. I mean, Sean Mendes, you got me. It like released here in. No, it, it only it got a limited release on Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just so that, to get Oscar, I, I honestly. Yeah, because I wasn't sure where to put it, but being that it's nominated it's 20, for this, can't, the canonically, Oscars, it is yeah. 2019. Um, so yeah, uh, if you enjoyed the show, let a friend know. Rate the show on iTunes. Uh, let us know if you also enjoyed. Uh, if you enjoyed the turning, let us know. <laughs> yeah. If you're Steven well, Spielberg. Please. <laughs> any reason to enjoy the turning i'm very curious if you're finn wolfhard oh my god no Ooh. yeah the finn wolfhard stands the heavy loaded the, Is that a thing? the reviews oh, on letterbox no. with five star drops being like oh, oh. finn wolfhard oh i gotta that's check a, that's this a out thing, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. he's 16 he's oh, okay. uh yikes Man. i mean all those children are suffering with curse that's true mm-hmm. um Change your thing, season three. Very good. Anyways. It's very good. It's very good. I'd say so. I'd, All right. I'd like to say it. I'd like to say it. Uh, well then, until next time, when you will, we will know. I'll sound like the Hedgehog 2020. <laughs> I still can't believe it's a real motion picture. It's happening. Uh, where that falls on the books, canonically. Uh, until then. <laughs>